Hey y'all, welcome back to Simple Sanctuary Garden. It has been a hot minute since we got to hang out. So I thought I would take you guys on a tour of my garden today and show you where we are. Daylight savings time just went into effect and my garden is already starting to transition from spring to summer. So I thought I'd show you guys where we are and what's coming up. So I did most of my winter spring gardening in the two ziggurat beds. Um, these are the tiered beds that my husband came up with. If you're curious about their construction and design, I went over that in a raised bed video from last year that I will link at one of these two corners. Hey, Ginge. I did most of my gardening here because I did a lot of leafy grease for uh, winter spring. And as you can tell, <laughs> as you can tell, I have a vocal dog. Um, as you can tell, the bok choy bolted. I harvested roughly like 10 pounds of it before um, all of it bolted, but that's actually why I harvested when I did is because this had started. I actually think it's really pretty. We don't have a lot of flowers in our yard right now. Azaleas are blooming here in Gainesville, but other than that, there's not a ton that's flowering. So the honeybees are loving these flowers right now. Another thing that's loving the bolted bok choy is aphids. They are actually, I have a few of them that are covered in aphids and I am kind of thinking that that might signal it's going to be a really massive aphid year. So what I'm planning to do for the summer garden is get some yellow solo cups, cover them in Vaseline, see if that um, keeps the aphids away from the rest of my plants and go from there. But I am, I have an inkling that aphids are going to be a problem this year. Let's see what else we have. Oh, okay. So look at Look at this. We planted a lemon lime cocktail tree on the bottom level here two years ago. So this is like the start of its second year really. And it is incredibly fragrant. I have never seen a lemon tree bloom quite like this. It's so impressive. Um, hopefully they get pollinated really well and we have just an absurd amount of lemons we got some huge and beautiful Meyer lemons that I am making into limoncello, but we actually only got like seven or eight of them. And so I'm hoping that huge clusters of blooms like this indicate that we're going to have a lot of lemons this year. It is, I mean, it's weighed down by the blooms alone. Um, my yard smells incredible. It's so much fun. This is the anniversary ziggurat. This is the one that my husband gave me, built me last year for our anniversary. It's the one with the compost tubes in each of the four top corners. And I put a huge amount of leafy greens and beets in this bed. And as you can see, it is looking lush. How's that for an angle? That's not terrible. Not a practice, guys. This bed is looking super lush. I've got radishes growing on the top because they're fairly quick and I'm gonna be putting summer seedlings in really, really soon. But my favorite part of this bed is this little shadowy bit over here. That's my small lettuce patch. Growing lettuce has been incredible over the winter. I'm planning on giving you guys a video next week about growing lettuce um, and growing lettuce in small spaces. It's so good. It's so, so good. All right, what else should I show you guys? Oh, I know it's been a while, so I thought I'd show you the Princess Palace's new upgrade. You guys are familiar with that rose trellis. With Valentine's Day this year, we installed the second one. I, or not my Grammy, Ryan's Grammy, who I claim for my own, sent them to us. Um, they are beautiful, and I'm hoping that this guy fills in as lush as this guy does, or has. I'm trying really, really hard not to squint. The sun is like straight in my eyeballs. So apart from the ziggurats and triggerot, we have our more traditional beds up along the fence. 
as you can see, things are really growing very, very well. Florida winter is like everyone else's spring, so our spring gardens are are pretty fun. So in this first bed, I have more bolted bok choy. Um, I'm gonna have a ton of seeds and a little carrot patch. This patch of carrots comes from seeds that a coworker gave me for a secret Santa. Um, they are super, super lush. I love the look of carrots because they're just so fluffy. They're a lot of fun. And they should be ready. They should be ready. Hopefully by Easter, it may be a little bit after. So we had a habanero here, Thai chili here. The Thai ch chili has clearly survived our winter, which, you know, again, I know it's not much of a winter, but we did have some hard freezes. I don't know if the habanero made it, which makes me a little sad. We've called this guy Gramps because he was our oldest plant. He has survived flood, neglect, everything, but it looks like, <laughs> I like break him apart. It looks like the freeze really did him in. The other thing that is going really, really well and is a lot of fun is my husband's bean and corn beds. If you have been watching us for a while, you know that this is an ongoing experiment. Uh, corn is surprisingly hard to grow. You wouldn't think so, but it's really, really difficult. And they are looking beautiful. So we actually, by we, I mean he, uh, started this corn and these beans at the tail end of January, maybe like the literally first of February, but really, really early here. And we did have a couple freezes, so we covered it with a frost cover. Pretty well everything survived. It's looking good. We've even got a couple corn that are starting to put off um, stamen. They're a little short for that, but you know what? They've survived. It, this is looking like our most successful batch of corn yet. All right, because we are transitioning from spring to summer, I have also got seedlings out the wazoo. This year, what I have done <laughs> is rigged a bottom watering system for the bulk of my seedlings, not all of them. I didn't quite have enough uh, drawers and I'm gonna show you guys. So these are the majority of my seedlings. This is, this white stuff over here is usually a frost cover. I have been using it if I notice a lot of like moth activity or that my seedlings are starting to look eaten up and I just cover it to keep the bugs off of them. I took seed trays and seeds in solo cups and have put them in some like cheap plastic drawers, the kind that you have like um, your, your clothes in when you were in a college dorm, those type of plastic drawers. And just set my trays in here and I'm bottom watering and I have seen a huge, huge difference. They, um, I'm also using little grow bags as well, which is another change, but the seedlings seem stronger. They don't seem to wilt as quickly in our heat, which really has already started. And I have had zero damping off. So I'm very, very excited. Some of my tomatoes are a little small, but it has until now been fairly cool. So hopefully they'll really get going soon. But what I really like about all of it is that damping off isn't a problem. It's a lot easier to control how much water they're getting. They seem stronger than my last year's seedlings. I seem to be having better germination. So we'll see how that goes. I have one last thing that I want to show you. It's a big project that we've been working on for working on for quite a while. We finally have made some like really significant progress and I'm very, very excited about it. So what you see here is what I formally called the front bed, which is the bed I just cobbled together from some assembled lumber. And you can see it kind of starting to fall apart, but that's okay. Um, we are putting up a fence around the front and that is a chicken coop that needs its roof repaired, but it is a chicken coop. And we are basically making a chicken pen. So what we're planning on doing is having this chicken coop that we can shuffle down the entirety of these beds. We're gonna have at least three more beds for uh, the coop to rotate through. 
and we're gonna have just a giant chicken yard. This gorgeous chain link behind me is staying because as you can see, I have a ginger and sweet ginger is gonna think that those chickens are for playing with and they are not for playing with. So we gotta keep things separate, but I am very, very excited about this. Hopefully we'll have chickens really soon. I really can't wait. Hey y'all, it is the next day. Um, I just got off of work, which explains all of my camera not readiness. And I realized I forgot to show y'all something that I'm exceptionally proud of and that it is really cool. And this is my last chance to show you. I grew a turnip the size of a baby. <laughs> all right, so here's where my turnips are next to this bolted bok choy that we talked about yesterday. Look, look at that thing. Like this is my hand. I've seen baby noggins smaller than this turnip. So we're gonna see how big this thing is. I'm so excited. Like, look at how big. All right, we're just gonna go for it. Ooh. Oh! <laughs> Look at that. I hold it this way, it's almost as long as my head, which is saying something. This is a honking turnip. We're gonna take it inside and weigh it. Ah! That's the biggest thing I've ever grown. It's huge. Y'all ready to weigh these in with me? That's definitely the biggest thing that I've ever grown. It's almost as big as my head, especially this angle, like, dang. But I'm very excited. Um, that's huge, especially for a turnip. I'm gonna go cook these puppies up. Thank you guys again one more time for hanging out with me, for touring my garden, for seeing my massive turnips. Um, I hope you enjoyed hanging out. We'll talk again soon.